Hi and welcome to this video where we look at one key concept that comes up very often in a paper one chemistry. We will look at the concept of the charge density. So charge density is the ratio between the charge and the volume of the ion. It increases with a decrease in ionic radius. So let's think about it and then we will look at its applications and how to apply it to exam questions. So one more time and read the definition with me. Is the ratio between the charge and the volume of an ion? Makes sense. It's density. We know density has been mass over volume. In this case, it will be charge over volume. We're talking about volume because if you think about ions, and we just talk about ions here, um, there are spheres. Okay, and the charge, let's say it's spread um, on that whole sphere. Okay, it's an approximation, obviously, but it helps with visualizing these uh, uh, attractions that will help with uh, explaining some trends and some values. So if you think about calcium and potassium, calcium, as you can see there, it's two plus ion, potassium is one plus ion. Um, very important to always look at the periodic table because that gives you a visual help, yeah, because uh, it, uh, <laughs> from the position of the, of the atoms, we can get so many properties, right? Um, calcium and potassium, they're in the same period, which means that they have the same shape. Shielding. So um, they don't differ in, their, in number of shells that they have. Okay, so they differ only in charge. In fact, the charge density depends on the charge or on the volume. Think about the equation. So the charge we have uh, calcium, it's two plus, so it has a greater charge spread over actually smaller volume because it gets smaller as a, the more electron it loses. So calcium has a greater charge density than potassium. Fluoride has a lower charge, has a higher charge density than chloride. And you can see there clearly, and if you look at the periodic table, you should be, be able to visualize it as well, that the chloride ion has a much bigger volume, okay? Because it has more shells, as we know, greater shielding, so the, the, um, the radius increases, okay? Which means that uh, the higher the charge, the greater the charge density, the smallest the volume, the greater the charge density, okay? Of course, we need to be able to compare um, either one. This is important because it gives us an idea of uh, attractions. In fact, the higher charge density, the stronger the attraction between ions, the more energy stored in the bonds. We're not talking about only, um, for example, bond strength, so ionic bond, it's, uh, um, this is what explains different in, uh, uh, in ionic, but also metallic bond, but also enthalpy values. And this is where you need to apply it um, in exam questions, because if you look at the diagram on the right hand side, um, we have an ionic compound, sodium chloride and water that is surrounding it okay so this is of course the sort of the concept of solubility but the in terms of energy stored in this bond it also refers to these forces for example between the the dipole of water and the ions in an ionic bond okay so let's see if you uh, if you if you got what i'm talking about the type of exam question where i've seen this most applied is discussing the enthalpy of hydration okay for example AQA 2021, this was part of a, a big question with Bonaba cycle and some calculation about the enthalpy of hydration. Uh, but this is the kind of suggestion thinking where this logic has to be applied. So just why this value is less exothermic than magnesium 2 plus. And this is what you need to think about. If, it, if it's helpful, what you could do is also have the equation down so you know that the density is equal to the, well, let's call it charge, not the mass, charge over volume. So what is changing here? Periodic table, of course. So you can look at uh, the, like, visualize calcium and magnesium. You know that calcium is bigger than magnesium, so it has a much bigger volume. So what would happen to the density of calcium 2 plus? It's lower. Okay, which means that the lower charge density means weaker attraction. Okay, so it's important that you practice this visualization. Two marks, guess what they are? Distributed charge density yeah, and explaining the attraction because, of course, here is referring to hydration. So that's why I mentioned the thing about the energy stored yeah, in these forces or bonds, because this would be, of course, a second mark. Here is the marking scheme. Calcium is a bigger or is a lower charge to size ratio, charge density, so we get attraction to the dipole in water. Okay, here is another example. If you want to give it a go yourself, stop, and then when you're ready with your answer, play again the video, because I will show you the marking scheme soon. Okay, again, same concept. Think about what can you compare volume or charge, and then what type of 
attraction are you talking about? With the dehydration is always the attraction between the ions and the dipoles of water. Why becomes less exothermic from lithium to calcium to potassium? Well, what changes as you go down the group? Again, the volume. Okay, so greater radius means lower charge density, means weaker attraction. So less exothermic, and it can be confusing with exothermic, exothermic. That's why I mentioned the energy stored there. Okay, because less exothermic simply means that there is less energy in it. And it's exothermic because you're making bonds yeah, between the water and the ions. That's why it's an exothermic value. Okay, here is the marking scheme for you to give it a read. Again, in terms of charge density and then the attraction between what? Those are the two things and those are the marks. Here is an OCR question for three marks. And this time it's about lattice enthalpy. Okay. Um, one other tip here, um, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride are oh, so worthy. If you have, if you can have in the exam, like, um, for example, formula or something that you can visualize, have that down. Okay. I think it would be more helpful. Um, also, it helps your reasoning as you write it down. So magnesium chloride is MgCl2, calcium chloride, it's Cl2. Okay. Like this, I know better that I'm comparing magnesium 2 plus and calcium 2 plus. Can you guess where the three marks are? Stop and play again. And when you're ready, the marking scheme is right here for three marks. Lattice enthalpy, so more exothermic of magnesium chloride. Remember, more exothermic, more endothermic, just more means more energy stored, okay? Which means that um, greater charge, why? greater charge density of magnesium, therefore stronger attraction. This time, again, notice the mark is attraction between what? Okay, that's why you have to mention between the chloride, okay, which was different, of course, than hydration. So second part, another application of the charge density. So it's the polarization, because if the charge density is very high, we cannot just uh, think about two spheres that perfectly attract. No, there is going to be some distortion, okay? What is called a covalent character, okay? This distorts the bond, and uh, um, this is an important concept for remembering group two trends, um, so between group two hydroxide and carbonates, the solubility and thermal stability. So, um, I have videos about that, so go to my YouTube channel to check. Um, if not, think about the this distortion. This weakens the bond. So that's one concept. But the other one is applied to differences, and you'll see in this question, between theoretical and experimental values. Read the question, and then in 30 seconds, I'll give you the answer. So the lattice enthalpy, of course, if you talk about enthalpy, the first thing to think about is uh, what is that? Like which enthalpy am I talking about? Where is the attraction? Okay, so there is a bit of reasoning to do always about that. So lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy when we have um, ions, gaseous ions to form one mole of ionic lattice. Theoretical, experimental. When it's different, guess what affects? Well, it's because there is this covalent character. Why is there a covalent character? Well, because um, of the charge density that, uh, yeah, the positive charge density attracts the electron density of the negative ion, causing this, what is called covalent character. In fact, as you can see from the marking scheme, we have this covalent character, okay? So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, drop a comment um, or, you can contact me and uh, I will see you in the next video. Good luck with your exam preparation.